I am Marie Blanchette, creator of Calypso, and you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Marie Blanchette about her new comic book, Calypso. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. It's also available on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube. I invite you to like and subscribe. Marie is a graphic designer who spends her spare time writing and doing illustrations. Author of a few novels and a webcomic, Marie gravitates towards science fiction and fantasy. She's been creating stories since infancy, and once she learned how to hold a pencil, she became unstoppable. Her most current comic book is entitled Calypso. Calypso, part one, is a story of six different people on four different planets who are about to die. Lucretia and Pierre Paul are preparing to fight to the death in an arena of gold country. Kai Andy is alone and abandoned on a dying planet. Miakiavel Mirfak are sentenced to hang. Jay is going down with her ship. In their last moments, a giant metal fish appears from the sky and steals him away into the vastness of space. What is waiting for them on board of the Calypso? And why did it take them, of all people? And so, without further ado, here's my chat with Marie Blanchette about her new comic book, Calypso. So, Marie Blanchette, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate your time. What I usually do to start off the interview is ask the creator about their first comic book. So, I'm wondering, what was the first comic book that you read? Uh, it's difficult to remember the very first one because we were a big reading family. And my dad was very into, you know, Asterix, Litsenic Bleu, um, Spirou, all of these French and Belgium comics. And yep. then when I was a teenager, I discovered manga. So uh. <laughs> that was my uh, my passion point. <laughs> Did you have any favorite manga? Uh, I like uh, all of the mangas by the uh, creator Clamp, uh, mm-hmm. especially uh, Tsubasa, Reservoir Chronicles, and uh, there was also that series, Olic, that was sort of happening at the same time as Tsubasa. So you had to read both in parallel. That was that was really fun. Well, very good uh, inspirational books growing up. But I'm wondering, who or what inspires you to create today? Uh, well, if we're talking about comics, uh, it's actually a bit of a funny story. Because I am a graphic designer by, like, it's my day job. And when I finished uh, here in Quebec, we have uh, CJAP, which is basically a sort of college that you can do uh, two years, uh, three years of CJAP and then go work, or you can do two years and then go to university. Uh, When I finished graphic design in CJAP, I wasn't ready to work yet. So I decided I was looking at the universities and there was one a seven hours drive away that also had a comic book program. And I sort of went oh, I love comic book. I wonder if I could go study that at the university uh, as a minor while I do uh, my major in graphic design. And I kept expecting people to stop me and no one did. So I ended up, you know, doing my minor in comic book, absolutely loving it. And one of our teacher was encouraging us to start our own, you know, big comic book project. And that's when I started developing Calypso. I have to say, all of the people that I studied with are really the people that inspired me to start creating a comic book for real. Very good. Are there any artists, uh, contemporary or or in the past, that inspire you to create? I have to say, like like I said, uh, I, I pretty much read a lot of everything these days. Uh, but in the last few years, I've been reading a lot of uh, science fiction books and also um, comic anthologies that I buy on Kickstarters. So the um, there was a comic uh, anthology. There was um, I think it was Fire and Hearth. I, I don't remember which order they came in. The, there was a, a one that was a science fiction and fantasy anthology, and then the the sequel. It was um, post apocalyptic or something like that. All of these uh, projects that I find on Kickstarter are really really inspiring because they're sort of on the pulse of what's happening right now. Very good. Yeah, they definitely are interesting, and there's a broad breadth of of talent there, that's for sure, that you don't get to see normally. 
Now, you've talked about your latest book already. You've hinted about it. It's called Calypso. And we met up at the Montreal Comic Arts Festival, and you introduced it to me there. But I wonder if you could talk a wee bit more about the story and what inspired you to create it. Basically, the story of the, the first book, it's um, it's uh, two gladiators on a sort of medieval fantasy planet, and they get kidnapped by aliens. So the idea of the first volume was very much to take this fantasy story, these fantasy characters, and to bring them into a science fiction story. And then every volumes after that, there's also there's going to be a bunch of people who get kidnapped by the same aliens. And some of them are going to be coming from a steampunk planet. Some of them are going to be coming from a post-apocalyptic planet. And at the end, they're all going to be bringing these very different worldviews and genres into the same space story. And they're all going to be on the same spaceship trying to survive, trying to, uh, you know, take control of the spaceship and these things. So the idea is, it was very much uh, this, this blend of uh, different types of story that I really enjoy. And it was sort of an excuse to for me to be able to draw very, very different planets and very different uh, costumes and types of characters. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much Calypso. The first volume is the fantasy uh, meets sci-fi. And the next one that I'm working on is going to be the steampunk meets sci-fi. Ah, so you, you mentioned that it's the first part. I presume that you have the story already mapped out for so many volumes? Well, the idea, I know myself, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep a very, very long project. So how I plan the story is right now I have an arc for four volumes. So once I'm, I'm done doing all four of the first volumes, the story is going to have a beginning, a middle, and a hand. And then I've got an idea for another four volumes and then an idea for another four volumes. So I can essentially stop at any time, but also the story has the potential to keep going. A bit like a bit like a manga or an American comic books, that sort of thing. Right, right. Very good. Well, I'm glad you have that because some people start a project and don't really know what the ending is. Sometimes that's that's like a, a, sort of a mystery in itself. Of, of, but I'm glad that you've got it figured out. Well, well, I, made the mistake, I made the mistake by publishing a, a first novel that was part one of a trilogy. And only after I had published the first one, I decided to make a lot of changes to volume two and three. So I learned my mistake there. No, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Now, I want to switch gears a wee bit and talk about the tools used to create your art. I wonder if you could walk me through your workflow as well. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a graphic designer, so of course the uh, digital tools, uh, especially all the Adobe software, Photoshop, uh, InDesign, th- these are my uh, my playground. And my exactly my uh, my workflow is very much based on having a print book at the end. Uh, so what I'm doing is uh, I I don't really write down the story so much as I um, I do the thumbnails which is really this quick sketch uh, on paper with a, with a pencil and a sort of, uh, I don't even really write the dialogue so much as an idea of what the characters are going to be saying. And then, uh, and as I'm doing the thumbnails, I am already counting the number of pages I'm going to have. So it's just the right amount of pages that when I put it in the book, the first page of the chapter is on the, the right. I, I'm thinking so much like a, a print designer mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's what I am. And once I have all of the chapters sort of roughly planned like this, I'm already going to be opening my software, my InDesign software to plan the pages are going to be ordered like so. And then I do, uh, I do all the pages on Photoshop. Now, you mentioned, uh, just to go back again, you mentioned that you were doing a minor in comic book creation at your educational facility. Did they also teach you about using digital tools, or is that something you picked up on your own? When I, uh, when I did the minor, I had already done my three years of graphic design in college. So when I arrived in the comic book classes, they were teaching us all the different uh, ways you can do comics. Uh, we did inks, we did uh, watercolor, we did a little bit of digital. But already I, was, I had been illustrating on Photoshop for several years by then. So <laughs> I, took, I took everything that they were teaching me and I was like, yes, that's great. And then I put it aside and I kept doing what I was already doing. Right, exactly. You go with what you know. That's it. Did you find any of those 
traditional type of methods inspiring or that something you wanted to bring into your digital work at all or you were completely separated from it? I love doing inks. I really, really love uh, working with inks, but I'm not really great at it. So right now I'm really, for the future, I'm still going to be working digitally, but I really hope that I'm going to be able to become good enough at uh, using uh, the inks and either um, the pen or the uh, a paintbrush that I can start doing um, prints or, you know, just artworks, just w- one-offs. Right. So I mentioned before that we met up at the Montreal Comic Arts Festival. So with that in mind, I'm wondering, will you be promoting your books at other conventions or festivals later this year? Uh, well, actually, this year, uh, I only had one, and uh, that was the Montreal uh, Festival. I went to Toronto, but just to, just to see it and have a table. Uh, and I'm hoping to go back to Montreal next year. Of course, since I have a you know full-time day job, I have to go with what vacation weeks I have. So I don't really have a lot of time to do uh, a lot of festivals and things. But I do have a new project that's coming out this year. So I'm probably going to be doing a Facebook launch or maybe that sort of thing. Still not really planned yet. Ah, have you thought about doing any book signings or anything in in comic book stores at all? Well, I live in the Riviere du Loup, so we don't have comic book stores, but we do have um, bookstores, one or two of which I'm you know, I'm familiar with the staff, so I'm probably going to be looking at them the next time I launch a novel. But for comic books, I'm not really sure if there's interest uh, where I live for that sort of thing. So it's something that I'm going to have to look into. Right. So I, I guess uh, using social media and the web is probably the best method. Yes. When I launched Calypso, it was in 2020 which was the worst time to launch mm-hmm. a new yes. book. So I did, do, uh, I did do it entirely digitally. Right, right. Now, you mentioned that you've got plans for Calypso and different volumes coming out, but do you have any other projects that you can talk about that are coming up down the road? Well, I have a, a zine that's actually coming out. Well, coming out. I'm actually putting it on sale on the Internet uh, starting at the beginning of next month. Uh, which is right now, we're what, in July? So uh, 1st of August, actually, I'm going to make a sort of media launch for my new zine, which is a, um, there are short stories of exactly 100 words each, and it's all illustrated, and there's uh, 31 short stories in these small anthologies. So that's my new project that's coming out soon. Very good. So with, with your different projects on the go, do you have a website that you recommend that people go to to find out about your current and your future projects? Yes, my website is blanchettemarie.com slash en if you speak English <laughs> and uh, just blanchettemarie.com if you speak French. Very good. Well, Marie, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you like to get across in this interview? Well, mostly we talked about, you know, uh, comic books since that's the... Uh, you know, that's the real passion here. Uh, I also, like I mentioned, I'm a graphic designer, but I'm also a writer. So I do have one novel that you can also find on my website. It's The Blood Prince, and it's uh, it's fantasy. It's full medieval fantasy with the dragons and the knights and the kings, really uh, that sort of classic story. Thanks to Marie for the chat. You can discover more about Marie on Twitter at B-L-A-M underscore Marie and on Instagram at B-L-A-M period Marie, and online at blanchettemarie.com. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts, and please leave a good rating. Also check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website, and follow along on Twitter at True North Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel, and hit the notification button. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics Podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2022.